Hello and welcome to O Worm. Today we'll be looking at the anatomy of the squid. Squids are part of a group called cephalopods, which also include animals like cuttlefish and octopods. The cephalopods are thought to be the most intelligent invertebrates, accomplishing the impressive task of beating out the likes of shrimp and snails. Just saying, not a lot of competition there. Squid intelligence evolved very differently than ours, in that their brain doesn't hog all the neurons. In fact, their decentralized nervous system distributes neurons throughout their body, so that their arms have around half of its neurons. Another interesting thing about squids is that squids, no matter what species, only live about a year. They have a very short life. Even the giant squid, which can reach 30 feet, only live about five years. This is baffling to me because it doesn't seem like a very good investment to be so smart and die so young. It's a bit like being told that you have a year left to live and then deciding to spend a vast amount of money and time to do a PhD. The math doesn't work out is all I'm saying. Now let's take a look at the squid's external anatomy. Now one of the most remarkable things about squids is their skin. If you get a closer look at it, you can see a lot of little colored dots like you can see here. These are called chromatophores, which are specialized pigment cells that can change color. Now what's interesting about squids is that not only can they change color, but they can also form patterns. These patterns serve as a form of communication between each other. For example, red on the arms can mean, back off, this is my girlfriend. Each colored pattern they form is a type of language. This is fascinating, mostly due to the fact that, as far as scientists can tell, squids are colorblind. Now this is the mantle of the squid, which is the main body, and it fits like a sheath over most of the internal organs. Here are the fins, which are used to maintain balance and change direction when swimming. You can see there's one on either side. Here is the siphon, which is used to expel jets of water that shoot the squid through the water. To do this, the squid pulls water into the space inside its mantle cavity through here, right here, and then it clamps the mantle shut like this, forcing the water out through the siphon. This method can take them to speeds up to 25 miles per hour, and squid are in fact the fastest invertebrates. Some squid can even use this method to fly, shooting out of the water and using their fins to glide. These squid have also been described by seabirds as easy pickings. Here is the eye of the squid. Let's zoom in. It's quite large and there's one on each side. So there's another one here. It seems opaque, but that's because of the preservative. It's actually clear in a living organism. Now, squid's eyes are similar to ours in that they are both described as camera eyes. In my opinion, this seems a bit unfair because eyes have been around a lot longer than cameras, so the cameras are the ones that should be called eye cameras, but I digress. They have a lens inside the eye just like ours do, and I'm going to try to take it out. So I'm just going to put my probe in there and dig around until I find it. There we go. So it's this, okay, whoops. <laughs> Let me get my forceps. There you go. So it's this hard pebble-like structure. And again, this would be clear in a living organism. Now here are the arms of the squid. There are 10 in total, but you can see that two are clearly longer than the other eight. And these don't technically count as arms. These are called tentacles. So I lied, there's actually eight arms and two tentacles. The arms and tentacles are covered in these suckers, like you can see here, and these provide suction to grip prey. The tentacles here usually grab and reel the prey in, while the rest of the arms hold and move around the prey while the squid eats. Speaking of eating, here's the squid's mouth. Let me just wrangle the arms around a bit. There we go, in the center. The squid actually has a structure called a beak inside its mouth, to cut up its prey that we'll see later. 
Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. So I'll be cutting the mantle right above the siphon, so make sure the siphon is facing up. It's already been cut a little, so I'll just cut the rest of the way. Make sure your scissors aren't angled down, because you might damage some of the internal structures if you do that. Just cut all the way up, and then I'll pin the mantle back. So this film that covers all of the organs is called the peritoneum. I'll just peel all of that back so we can see the organs better. So you can see the pink structures here. This pink is actually latex that the squid's been injected with to keep some of the structures intact. So squids aren't usually pink on the inside. So first of all, you can see that the, there's these cartilage plates in the mantle that provide more support. Now let's look at these things. So these two things, one here, and there's another one on the other side. These are the gills of the squid. Now these gills provide gas exchange, taking in oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide. Above the gills here is the heart. Squid hearts are really fascinating. They have a main systemic heart that pumps blood around the body as part of the general circulatory system right here. And they have these two sidekicks right here and here on the other side. And these are called the brachial hearts. The brachial hearts pump blood specifically to the gills, which are right below each of them. Going back to the systemic heart, the systemic heart has three chambers, which means two atria and one ventricle, which all work together to pump blood to the squid's body. Up here are also just some more structures of the heart. The blood of a squid is actually blue because it has the copper-rich protein hemocyanin. Our blood is red because it has the iron-rich protein hemoglobin. Squid prefer hemocyanin because it's better for oxygen transport at low ocean temperatures and low oxygen concentrations. Now let's get into the digestive system. Here is the digestive gland of the squid. It releases digestive enzymes to help break down food. Some people also call this the liver because it does a lot of typical liver functions too, like detoxification. And moving up, here is the stomach right here this pouch-like structure, and the food passes straight from the stomach into the cecum right here. All of that is the cecum, which is where most of the nutrient absorption takes place. Now let's look at the reproductive system. This squid is male, so you can see here is the vas deferens, this coiled tube right here, and here is the testes. If this was a female, you would see two large structures called the nidamental glands, which secretes a substance that covers and packages the eggs. You would also see a single ovary. Okay, so now let's move back down towards the head. I want to point out this dark structure here. This is the ink sac of the squid. Squids eject ink from their ink sac to distract predators while they escape. It checks out. If my food drew a bucket of ink at my face, I would also be distracted. Generally, octopodes produce black ink, while squid ink is blue-black, and cuttlefish ink is a shade of brown. You can make like a really depressing painting with those. Now here are the retractor muscles, here, and another one on the other side. And these retractor muscles move the squid's head. You can even move them yourself, like this, and you can see that the head moves with it. The squid can use these muscles to steer because you may notice that the siphon, which is right here, is also attached to the head. By moving the siphon, the squid can move the direction of the jet of water, changing its direction. Alright, now let's cut into the head. First just peel back the siphon so it doesn't get in the way. Now just cut into the space between the mouth and the arms here, 
and just cut straight up until you reach the end of the head. Then you can just use your hands to pry the two sides open carefully. So up here is the brain of the squid. It also has a skull made out of cartilage which you can feel here. Below that, this large ball thing is called the buccal mass, and this is where the mouth leads into. You can also see the esophagus here coming off from the buccal mass. Right here, you can also try to follow it up a little bit. Now I'm going to cut into the buccal mass and pry it open. So I'm going to take it out a bit, and then I'm going to zoom in. So here you can see the beak. It looks a lot like a parrot's beak, actually. I love it. It looks so much like a bird's beak. Anyway, this hard, sharp, murderous beak is used to kill and dismember prey. Now that we're done with most of these structures, I'm going to peel it all back to expose this hard structure here. Now, you should know that squids are a bit like clams, except they decided millions of years ago that they'd had enough of this shell thing and never went back. However, they still have a remnant of the shell in its body, and it's this thing, which is called a pen. This provides extra support to the squid's body. The pen is also sometimes called a gladius for its resemblance to the Roman short sword of the same name. The pen isn't mightier than the sword after all, I guess. It's rare to find the pen completely intact in a preserved specimen, but I'll try to keep it as much in one piece as possible. There we go, this piece is pretty large. Now that we've covered everything, we can go back to the ink sac because now even if the ink spills out, we don't have to worry about it obscuring any structures. The ink is a bit congealed because it's a preserved specimen. Alright, that's the end of our squid dissection. Thanks for staying, lads. Here's a fun fact about squid to send you on your way. There's a species of tiny deep sea squid that's nicknamed the fire shooter because it shoots out a cloud of light which comes from bioluminescent photophores to distract predators. Alright, so now I have a pen and ink, so guess what I can do with it. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe for more, 